Number one, come home. I definitely want this story to be anonymous. Once you listen to the entire thing, I think your viewers will understand why. Sometimes, even though a story needs to be told, it also should be done in such a way that doesn't bring unwanted attention upon those it happened to. It's difficult being a single parent, especially when you have very young children. My eldest at the time of this story was a 13-year-old boy, and my younger child was a 10-year-old boy. Their father left a few years before this happened. I hadn't been able to contact or even find him. I had to work two jobs in order to pay for everything, since I didn't have any child support. I also refused to not provide as much as I could for my children, but that also meant that I didn't see them a whole lot. For the first couple of years after their father left, my sister would stay home with them while I was at work. But unfortunately, she had to relocate for work, and this left me without a babysitter. However, my older boy was really responsible, and Lord knows I was left at home a lot when I was his age, so I agreed to let him babysit. My children rode the bus to school, and I always saw them off. More often than not, however, I would not be there in the afternoon when they got home. They were directed to go home, and not answer the door or phone for anyone other than me. This process had been in place for several months, successfully, when the events of the story took place. In the afternoon and evening, I work in a benefits call center, so I'm used to answering the phone constantly. This evening, I heard the phone ring and picked it up. After introducing myself, I asked the customer if I could help them. All I heard was a voice saying, You should come home. Then there was a click, and the line was disconnected. I didn't know what to think at first. I hadn't checked which line was blinking, so I thought for a moment that I could have accidentally picked up the personal line. However, the only people who had that number were my sons and my family. I almost then dismissed the phone call as nothing more than a prank call. Something that people working in call centers are used to getting every now and then. Still, I wondered if maybe I should call my sons and check and see if they were doing all right. However, before I had a chance to do this, the phone rang again. This time, I did look at it, and it was indeed my personal line calling. Picking up the phone, I simply said, Hello? Once again, the voice said, you should come home. Then it clicked, and that was it. I immediately became very concerned. I couldn't think of who could have possibly been calling me. I didn't recognize the voice, and I knew it was not someone I had given the phone number to. Every weird caller urban legend started flooding through my mind, and I knew I had to call my kids and see if they were okay. Before I could call out, however, the personal line rang again. I was hesitant to pick it up, because I was just sure it would be the same thing again. There was not a caller ID on the phone, so I couldn't tell who it was. Slowly, I picked up the phone and said, Hello? Mom, Bobby said he saw someone in our backyard. He thinks it is Dad, but I don't think so. What should we do? I wasn't sure how to respond at first never having been in such a weird position before. But I told them to go into my room and don't answer the door or reveal that they are home. I would call the police and would get home as soon as I could. I called the police and told them what was going on. I then informed my boss and said that I had to go and she told me to. I left without even thinking of signing out of my computer or anything. The whole ride home was just me worrying. It didn't help that there were like three police cars outside my house when I arrived. The only thing that did help, though, was seeing my two sons sitting safely in one of the patrol cars. Sitting in one of the other cars was their father. Trying to piece together what happened, I found out a lot of things that I wish I never had to. He was wanted by the police in a different state for murdering his girlfriend. That was two weeks prior. 
though I was relieved to know that he had no intention on hurting his children, he was using them to try and lure me back home. And although he didn't admit to wanting to kill or hurt me, it was assumed and rather obvious that this was his intention. Then, he had the phone number because he had called the house earlier and talked to Bobby, who had answered the phone when he shouldn't have. He told Bobby not to tell his brother, but that is why Bobby knew it was his father in the backyard. Thankfully, my ex is serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Number 2. The Boogeyman When my oldest son was really young, he got really scared of our basement. I mean, he would actually be terrified of going down there for any reason. And it sort of came out of the blue as well. I mean, we didn't really use the basement for much at all. It was not a finished basement, and the only way you could get into it was outside the house. It took up about half the size of the house under the house. The rest of the house had a crawl space under it. The only things that we could keep under there were things like bicycles, or anything that wasn't paper or cloth. Only things that could get wet. When it rained, water would always get into the basement, and there was a drain for it, so it never flooded. But it wasn't an ideal basement for anything else to be put in. Because of what the basement was like, I can understand him being afraid of it. I mean, it was dark and musty, and you couldn't see into the crawl space at all. It didn't bother him when he was really young, but when he got to be around 10 years old, that is when the basement became an object of terror for him. It first started when he was outside while I was working in my garden. I asked him to go into the basement to get something for me. It was so long ago that I cannot remember what it was, but I guess that's not important. He didn't come back for a long time. Finally, when I went to go and check on him, I saw him standing halfway down the steps. When I asked him what was wrong, he didn't answer me at first. And finally, he simply asked me if I could just go and get the item for myself. He didn't mention anything about why he did not want to go into the basement, and he didn't mention that he was afraid of everything. Coco Taylor may have been disappointed because she goes down in the basement all the time, but I didn't even mind. I could tell that something was bothering him, so I was more than willing to get the item. After that day, he would never even go through the basement door. He was constantly afraid of the basement and became convinced that the boogeyman was living down there. Now this was odd to me because I never told him about the boogeyman. I wasn't into scaring my son. But I figured at the time that this happened, he must have just picked it up from some friends at school. In the beginning, I didn't see this as a big deal. At his age, it really was normal to be scared of some creepy thing, and the basement definitely seemed creepy. I knew that it was something that he would just outgrow. A few months after all this began, just the two of us were home. My son was taking a nap, and I needed to make a run to the store. I never left him home by himself at his age. However, he had been really exhausted, and we lived in a really safe neighborhood. I would only be gone a short time, so I locked everything up and quickly ran to the store. When I got home from the store, I heard my son crying. Concerned, I ran to his bedroom. I heard him, but didn't see him. It turned out that he was in the closet crying. When I asked what was wrong, he at first refused to tell me. However, I eventually pried it out of him. And when I did, it was terrifying what he told me. The boogeyman living in the basement came into my room, he told me, and he threatened to kill me if I told anyone he was there. I didn't hesitate to ask him to explain. I immediately called the police. I had watched too many stupid people make stupid mistakes in horror movies. I didn't want to be that person. The police got there and searched the basement. They found a man in our crawl space. He was a creepy looking guy, and I could see why my son would think this guy was the boogeyman. But even creepier, he had an area set up in our crawl space 
he had obviously been living in. And even creepier than that, he had some erotic pictures of me that I had taken from my husband a long time ago. The very first time my son went into the basement, he had seen the man for a brief moment. When he asked if someone was there, the man simply replied back, I'm the boogeyman. The creep went to jail for a short time, and an order of protection was put on him. I have, to this day, never seen him again. My son is a senior in high school, and seems happy and adjusted, unscarred by this incident. Number 3. Letters Honestly, what is more fun than that very first time as a teenager that your parents let you stay home by yourself? And I am not talking about why they go to dinner or to go see a movie. I mean when they leave on vacation or to visit relatives and they give you permission to be home by yourself for a week. It is hard to imagine anything else being such a moment to look forward to when you are that young. For me, it was when I was 16 years old. My parents decided to go on a cruise for their honeymoon. They actually offered to take me along with them, but I had no interest in going on a cruise ship. Actually, although I didn't admit this to them, I'm sort of scared of ships and being out on the water. My mom was going to see to it that I stayed with some relatives, but my dad decided I was old enough to be by myself for a while. Mom was sort of reluctant but my dad was able to convince her that it was a good idea. Well, the first couple of days were happy as can be. I didn't have any friends over, or any big or small parties. It was nothing like that. I just reveled in the idea of having the house all to myself. I watched a lot of movies, played a lot of video games. I walked around in my underwear, or even less after taking a shower. Just the normal sort of thing that a teenage boy would want to do. Then, on the third day, I went to check the mail. The only thing in the mailbox was an unaddressed envelope. It had my name on it, but that was all. So I opened it up, and it was a secret admirer card. There was no writing in it, and it was unsigned. I thought it was odd that there would be no writing, but I didn't worry about it. I thought it was cool to have a secret admirer. Other than that, though, I put the card aside and just really didn't think about it anymore. So anyway, the following day, I was hanging out in my living room in just a towel after I had taken a shower. I heard the mailman come. Once I was sure he was gone, since all I was wearing was a towel, I went to check the mail. This time there was actual mail in the mailbox. However, there was another envelope that had nothing but my name on it. I opened it, and this time, there was something else in it. It was like an index card, and it had an equal sign and a closing parentheses sign on it, so it made a smiley face. And that was it. And much like the last time, there was nothing else to indicate who the letter could have been from. Again, I didn't think it was too weird. I just figured it was something from this new secret admirer that I had. So I put it aside, and once again, had it put out of my mind. The following day, things changed just a little bit. This time, there was another envelope addressed to me, but it was a packed envelope. I brought it inside, and opened it up. What was in there was nothing short of shocking and terrifying. They were pictures of me from the past few days and they were pictures of me doing everything. Some were just of me playing games, but others had me walking around in a towel. Some had me naked in my bedroom after taking a shower and before getting dressed. There were a couple of me smoking pot in the living room, and plenty of the pictures appeared to be taken from close up, meaning that someone could have been just outside my window. I didn't know what to do. I know that the immediate response most people might have is to call the police. However, I couldn't do that. There were pictures of me smoking pot, and although I didn't have to turn those over to the police, whoever had taken the pictures surely had copies of them themselves. If my parents would get to see those, 
there would be no telling the level of trouble that I would be in. I just couldn't do it. And I figured that was the very reason the pot-smoking pictures were put in there. To keep me from going to the police. I did the only thing I knew I could do. I went to every single window in the house and pulled down and shut the blinds. I made sure all the doors and windows were locked. I took a big kitchen knife and had it with me the entire time I was in the house. The rest of my time home alone wasn't horrible, but I was scared most of the time. I kept expecting to get another letter from whomever this was, but that didn't happen. It wasn't so bad during the daytime, but the nights were scary. I spent the entire time in my home, dark and isolated from the rest of the world. I was as looking forward to my parents coming home as I had been for them to go in the first place. When they did come home, I was further scared that whomever had left me the envelopes would send another, but they didn't. But it was a long, long time before I began to feel comfortable in my house again. With my parents home, I couldn't keep the blinds down all the time, and I always felt like someone was watching me. Hey all Killer Orange Cat here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have been working to get it finished from the moment I woke up, so enjoy. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you're not already subscribed to Killer Orange Cat, please feel free to hit the subscribe button in the bell below, or wait for the icon of Ichigo the Cat that appears at the end of this closing. Leave me a comment to let me know what you thought of the video, and feel free to share it with someone you think might enjoy it. If you have an original story you like narrated on Killer Orange Cat, please email it to the address included in the description. But as always, please don't forget to make sure to check in your closet and check under your bed because you never know where a Killer Orange Cat might be hiding. Good night.